Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, um, uh, and in fact, when I look back, I kind of think it, it, it's, it's the fault of Henry V that I've ended up writing uh, sort of coming-of-age novels because my favourite Shakespeare play is Henry IV, part one, specifically. And, um, and my favourite speech is the whole big speech he gives sort of kind of near the beginning where, you know, he says... Uh, uh, it ends with, I so offend to make offence a skill, redeeming time when men think least I will. And it's all about, you know, being a, basically a fuck up. And um, am I allowed to say that? Okay, yeah, just checking. <laughs> Sorry, well, after John Ronson. Um, and, uh, um, and, you know, screwing around all the time with false staff and hanging around in pubs and, you know, just being useless. And, you know, his father's upset and he wants him to be a good soldier and a good future king. And, you know, he's saying, look, you know, I'll take my time, but I'll, I'll do it eventually. So, yeah, he's, he's the guy. Oh, my God, one book. Um, yeah. yeah. One book is tricky. I mean, you know, probably like, three quarters of my generation, it was Catch-22. Um, you know, before that, I mean, you know, it's so funny what does change your view of the world. My father had a copy of of Contiki, which was a story about the, you know, Tord Heyerdahl, you know, on a raft. There's all these Norwegian guys, you know, going across the Pacific to, you know, do the uh, journey that, um, I think it was the people who were supposed to go to Easter Island. I must have read that 400 times. Why? You know, but I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, that was pivotal. James Bond, you know, on all the bestseller lists, and that was really pivotal. I, I mean, but it changed my worldview. And maybe, maybe not so much. I mean, I think, you know, it was a kind of an accumulation, really. You know, there was a book in America... Um, called A Wrinkle in Time, which nobody here reads, um, but everyone, everyone in America has read, and not just people my age, but like everybody living in America now. I mean, it's just one of those books that all kids read. It's never been out of print um, since 1960 when it was written. And that was pretty, that was pretty pivotal. I mean, that was, you know, sort of fa science fiction, fantasy, um, but a real book of ideas as well. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 55. I, I wrote my first novel when I was 46, I think. And so I, you know, 25 years, I got up every morning and, you know, got dressed and went to an office, you know, got on the Northern Line. And, um, so no, I, I love it. You know, the longer I do it, the lonelier and stranger I get. Um, but, I mean, occasionally, like some days I'll be, you know, I'll be working away, working away, and, and the phone rings, and, and it's my agent. And you can hear, on the other end of the phone, you hear that slightly frightened sound in someone's voice where they realize you haven't talked to anyone all day. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, sometimes it, you get a bit strange, but I don't get lonely now. Uh, you know, the discipline... I think, and, and again, I bet you most writers would tell you this if you pushed hard enough. Uh, the discipline really is fear because you always think any book that's been published or any book that you've gotten advanced for or, or any book that had anyone reading it at all was probably going to be the last one, you know. And so, um, and I'm pretty much the breadwinner in the family anyway. So, you know, I, I write you know, partly because I like it um, and partly because I, I, I consider it my job, really. So... Um, it's something I, I don't, you know, get. I, the thing that drives me mad is um, the people who are always posting on Facebook 3,000 words today. And you think, yeah, what kind of words are they? <laughs> are they good words? You know, I'm not that interested in quantity. Yeah, you have to say yes. I mean, there's no way you can say no. You know, let's go back to when things were carved in in stone. I mean, there's no point in not seeing it as an opportunity. And and I think, you know, the thing that I find really interesting is that um, everyone is is making predictions and everyone is sort of, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom and there's a lot of, ooh, it's the end of the book. But actually, things are always zigging and zagging and they're never really zigging and zagging the way people think they're going to zig and zag. So... 
I, I just have this really distinct memory back in the 80s when everybody said, oh, it's so sad. You know, no one is ever going to write a letter ever again. The letter is dead. You know, and suddenly you've got kids writing five billion emails a day and 98,000 texts. And, you know, and it, it actually reminds me of sort of late 18th century where, you know, a gentleman would get up and he, and he would just do his correspondence in the, in the morning. And it wasn't all, you know, 12-page letters. A lot of it was just like texts, you know. So you don't know where it's going to go. And, and that's half the fun of it, I think.